Today on Carcass, we introduce a ridiculously huge project vehicle. And before we even touch it, we're taking it off-road. You're watching Carcass. When you want to build something different, you turn to these guys, Jeremy Wegman and Jimmy King. Jeremy was raised in Minnesota building street rods. He's a builder, fabricator, and welder. Jimmy grew up in Nevada, working in his dad's garage building cars. He's a mechanical engineer, builder, and fabricator. They take left for dead rides and transform them into one-of-a-kind builds. If you can dream it, they can build it. This is Carcass, a non-traditional speed shop. This behind me is our 1984 Chevy M1010 ex-military truck. Now this thing was used as an ambulance for the US Coast Guard. This is actually a one and a quarter ton, almost 7,500 pound truck, and that means there's a lot of good parts under it. Ooh, it's a little stuck. It's a pretty big looking RV thing. When I first walked in the door, I had no idea what would be in here. And with a name like what's on the wall, well, who knows? Now you're not gonna make some kind of crazy ice cream truck something thing, cause that box has that same look and sometimes y'all both are a little creepy. Uh, it might be a taco truck, we haven't decided yet. Oh man, seriously? Yeah, what'd you think you'd see when you walked in here? Uh, not that. What do you think, it's very fitting, isn't I it? I think, well, why'd you get something like that? It's ready to go just as is, isn't it? I mean, seriously, these things are great. We got some really, really good bones to start with. So the bones of the truck are really what we're the most interested in. It's got a corporate 14 underneath the rear. It's got a Dana 60 in front of it, which is the kingpin style that everybody's looking for. It's got an old, tired, clapped out 6.2 diesel underneath the hood, which is definitely gonna go. But it's got a big turbo 400 and a 208 transfer case, and that is gonna be the best platform we can get to build, well, something really, really crazy. <laughs> Look at Boys. that. What do you think of this thing? Coming in the door initially, I didn't know what to expect because it could literally be anything because of what's going on down here. Smells like diesel. Smells yeah. like diesel. What year is this thing? 84. 1984. Oh, that, that's a good year for trucks and Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> that is more cool than a Black Panther riding a unicorn through the woods. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I guess my imagination started running and the first thing I saw was the big box in the back and obviously it's some type of uh, ambulance, you know, vehicle. Dude, what's with the creepy doll? <laughs> oh my God, that Came with the truck. Check that, check it out. Two fold down cots. Yeah. Side to side, you could do a little kitchenette. For sure. I'm in love with it. I think it's a brilliant idea for a project. I Dude, really that do. That doll's like freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's what, what's the, what's the deal with that, but I'm, I ain't gonna touch it. Get that thing away from me. Get that thing away from me. <laughs> we found this truck in Louisville, Kentucky. The previous owner didn't really want to sell it because he wanted to turn this truck into a camper, but after he found out what we were gonna do with it, he decided to let it go. So we loaded up the truck and brought it back to our shop. All right, I heard y'all got a new truck, but oh my goodness, I was not expecting this. <laughs> so when I first walked through the door, I saw this big giant green behemoth. I can't really say I knew what to think. I'm in mid-conversation with this guy and he leaves me. Well, I heard there's a new truck to check out. It got you down here, didn't it? Ooh, I like it, baby. Do you? <laughs> OD Green. I walk in looking for LT and uh, I see why he strayed away. They got this rig sitting in the studio and it is wildly different from anything I've seen being built around here. I mean, the options are endless. You could put a pool in it. I would make this thing one of those Icelandic excursion cruisers. Huge tires, able to withstand the cold, camper in the box, and just go out and have a great time with it. Um, I would probably make it a tracked vehicle if it were me. Put big tracks on it, raise it up. Um, I, I think it's the ultimate off-road camper. You could uh, entertain out of it. Bachelorette party bus. I would drive this thing around, maybe put a little hot tub in the back, some good music. I would have to DJ it, of course. 
LT could drive. Shoot, you could make a food truck. You could make uh, all kinds of different things. You could haul your parts around if you was going somewhere, if you're building a race car, that type of thing. The previous owner had a really cool plan for it. He was going to turn it into an off-road kind of camping truck because of the big thing on the back. But, well, we have a little bit different plans for it, and you guys will find that out a little bit later. Coming up, we take our top heavy monster to hit the trails at Woolies Off-Road Park. You're watching Carcass. Well, Jimmy, what do you think? Should take this thing off-road? I think so. It's very underpowered, extremely overweight, and has an astronomically high center of gravity. So, what could go wrong? This is our M1010 X military truck. It's a 1984 Chevy, actually one and a quarter ton that weighs almost 7,500 pounds. So these civilian style vehicles were used in the US military to haul troops and cargo. In like our case, they were also retrofitted to be an ambulance. Now they replaced the Jeep in the mid 70s and they have really good bones underneath it. And that's all we're really interested in is what makes the truck underneath this big green shell. So what we're gonna do is take this thing out go run it down a whole bunch of trails and see how it actually performs. Off-roading with this truck, it's really heavy and it's really tall. I don't know how well we're gonna navigate the trails, but before we take it apart, we gotta do something with it. Well, here we are, one of my favorite spots, Woolies Off-Road Park. Woolies is a great place to take any vehicle out on a trail ride. They have tons of trails and we know exactly where we're going so we can run some of the more open stuff that can accommodate our vehicle. So tell me something, Jeremy. How are we gonna go off-roading with these almost bald tires? Well, I got a little surprise for you right in the back. All right, man. Open it up. These are 37s. This should get us where we need to go. Sweet, dude. You got lug nuts and everything? Yeah, we got all the tools. We're gonna do that right here. Right on, dude. We're bumping our tires up from 32 inches all the way up to 37. Normally, you would do a gear swap for tires this size, but these trucks come with 456 gears, which is a good match for this set. Here, you're younger. You take that. I'll <laughs> take the tire, because that's easy. I'll throw it over there. Mm-hmm. That is more my style. It's bigger and better. Let's go drive it. Mm-hmm. The truck's been doing absolutely outstanding. I, you really can't ask for a better base platform to start with. No. Yeah, and it's locked already. Yeah, what else do you want, I guess? We, I mean, we upgraded, we threw some tires on it. Threw some tires on it. Necessary. Necessary upgrade. Yeah, the skinny 235s weren't gonna do us much good in the mud holes, but these 37s, they got it. They got it. They got it. So how might someone attain a truck like this? Well, it's not as hard as you might think. On the internet, Craigslist, things like that, that's where we found ours. And why might you want one of these? Well, you got a Dana 60 in the front and a 14 bolt in the back, a 208 transfer case and a turbo 400, all for 5,000 bucks. And that's very within reach of a lot of people. So for not a lot of money, you can get an off-road capable vehicle without doing any work to it. And that's why this is a great start to our project. We're having a blast driving our new project vehicle around at Willie's Off-Road Park. And since it recently rained, <laughs> we're having a whole lot more fun. So when you round the corner and see a puddle, all you can think about is putting that pedal as far down to the floorboard as you can get it, holding onto the wheel and hitting that baby dead center to see what you can throw as far as a wake. I'm thinking the same as he is, smash the pedal and see what happens. With our daylight quickly fading, we decided to end our day of fun. We had a great day of wheeling, and all we have to do now is get our truck back to the shop and start our project. 
this right here is the kind of build we do on Carcass. Mm -hmm. What's next for our big behemoth? We reveal our frame stripping plan next on Carcass. Oh, this is a genius idea. Man, I don't know about you, but I am super excited about this combo. Me too, but it's a lot of work until we get to see the final product. We have huge plans for this truck, and it all revolves around our 1953 Willys body and the chassis of our 1984 CUCV. And to top it all off, we're gonna throw a blown small block Chevy at it. To do all that, we're gonna have to drastically change the way our CUCV looks to accommodate the Willys body. And that means we're gonna have to shorten the chassis. But before we can even think about doing that, we're gonna have to get rid of the cab and that big 2,000 pound box that's on the back. All right, let's see what we're working with here. Well, it's just like a regular truck bed, ain't it? Uh, it looks like there's brackets welded to the chassis and then bolted to the box. All right, so should we use the torch or try the impact? I think a combo of both would be fine. All righty, well, now's a good time to start. Yeah. To get our hands on the bolts that hold this ammo box in place, we're gonna first have to get rid of some lights and some bracketry that's in our way. There it goes. Broken bolts. It won't let go. Like legit, it's stuck in there. How's that happen? Reminds me of the Midwest. Everything's rusty. I'm rusty tractors. Man, I'm surprised the bolts are actually coming off. Well, most of them anyway. After fighting a whole bunch of corrosion out back, we're gonna make quick work of the spare tire carrier with the good old torch. This will give us room to flex our muscles removing 30-year-old bolts and body mounts. All in all, we got rid of 10 of these stubborn mules from the chassis. The final and most important thing we need to do is to disconnect the diesel filler neck from the body. Jeez. All right. All right, man, how do you think we're gonna pick this up? Well, I think the front corner should be plenty strong right here. Yeah, it's pretty thick, I think that'll work. All right, and then I think we'll pick right off of the back, kind of the same spot. Okay, I'm down with that. All righty. Hey, <clears throat> no time like the present. I'm gonna have to clip some wires quick. Okay, I think we're good. We can roll out of here. All right, let's push it. With the front end of the truck out of the way, we'll use a cart to get rid of the box. That will make room for us to get started on our front end, because we're gonna need the lift to help disrobe this beefy chassis. But before we can do that, there are a few things we need to button up. We'll need to dismount the master cylinder for our brakes, disconnect any wiring, and disengage the steering. With everything taken care of under the hood, we can tackle the body mounts. Oh man, we are so close to putting the Willys body on that thing, but before we can even think about shortening the chassis, there's a bunch of stuff we gotta get rid of. We have to get rid of the entire powertrain, that junky old exhaust that we can't use anyways, and drain and remove the old fuel tank, which I'm not really looking forward to. Yeah, me neither. Well, that's enough sitting around. Break time is over. We're gonna attack all these items simultaneously, and removing the grill guard will help us do just that. That's heavy duty. Draining the fuel will allow us to snip the lines right next to the gas tank. And then we can start the process of removing that old thing. To finish the fuel system, we're gonna remove all the old fuel lines, because none of that's gonna work with the plans we have for our willies. We'll hop on the exhaust next. There's really no point in keeping it around because we're shortening the frame and we're going with a different engine. With all the clamps removed, we'll loosen up the header side and slide it out the back in one piece. There's a few more points we need to disconnect before we can get to the heavy lifting. The front drive shaft needs to come loose and then we'll just heat up the rear bolts so we can get that loose as well. 
Finally, the engine mounts can be loosened up and the transmission can be broken free. With the help of our forklift, we're now able to lift a 700 plus pound powertrain from our chassis. Well, we're done. Wait a minute, we're done with this, but the chassis is really filthy. I think we should clean it before we move forward. You wanna take that outside and pressure wash it? Yeah. All right, I'll help you push. All right. Well, it's way lighter without the engine. It sure is. After a quick wash, we slice and dice our frame to accept our Willie's body. Next on Carcass. Man, that pressure washer worked great. This thing's squeaky clean. You know, but now we gotta figure out how to get that onto this chassis. I think the best spot to make the cut is right here in the middle because it's nice and straight and it's the length we need. So I think this right here, that's the ticket. We should definitely add a boxing plate on the inside and a fish plate on the outside to make sure this thing is stiff and strong. The wheelbase of our CUCV is 132 inches. Now the wheelbase of our Willys is 104 inches. Now to marry those two together, we're gonna have to cut a section out of the frame of the CUCV. When we're done with that, we're just gonna bring the two halves together, then we'll grab our Willy's body and set it right on top. To get this cutting party started, we opted to use cutoff wheels. The cutting disc makes it pretty easy to follow a straight line. To knock this out fairly quickly, Jimmy and I are both gonna be cutting each side of the frame. We're gonna cut the front side loose first, but this isn't gonna be just any old straight cut. That's right, at the bottom of our frame we left a little tab. This will help realign the chassis later on. With our final cut releasing some stress in the frame, we'll separate the two halves. Halfway done. <laughs> Halfway done. Half the truck, get it, got it? <laughs> yeah. With the front half out of the way, we'll get started shortening the chassis. In this scenario, we're starting at the bottom. We'll follow that up with cutting up the side of the chassis. And finally, we'll make the last cut safely from the top, allowing the 25 pound chunk of metal to fall to the ground. Lastly, we'll sneak up on our lines with a grinder, then we'll prep the two sections to be welded back together. This is a good time to wear your respirator with all that metal and rust that's in the air. Wow, that's a whole lot lighter than I expected it to be. I'm hoping this fits up, but I'm expecting we'll have to do a little bit of trimming before we can tack it up. It kind of looks like the uh, chassis widened when we cut it apart. Well, you know what? We can take a ratchet strap, loop it around, and then see if we can't get it back in alignment. Yeah, we'll pull them together before we tack it. Yeah, good All idea. Right. With the gap closed up, we'll pull out our Lincoln Electric Power MiG 260. This welder has the ready set weld feature which allows us to dial in the 3 16 chassis material. All right, my side's tacked and you're tacked too, right? Yeah, but the bottom of the frame rail is still kicked out about 16th on my side. We're yeah, and I'm push. out like, 3 16 on my side. Okay, so I think we keep tightening the ratchet strap until my side comes in. I'll tack it, tighten it more, tack your side. That's a fantastic plan, let's do that. That's good. We're making sure to add some beefy tacks because we're adding a lot of stress with the ratchet strap. Each click of the strap adds more force to the chassis. A small tack could easily crack and cause a dangerous situation. All tacked up? Yeah, all tacked up over here. All right, let's get this thing welded in. Sounds good. And to make sure that we have good weld penetration, we added a bevel to each side of the frame rail, resulting in a strong weld. We have the chassis welded now, but to make sure it's strong enough, we're gonna add some reinforcement in what's called a fish plate. A fish plate is just a fancy name for a plate that bridges the weld seam in the chassis. This gives us another layer of reinforcement and ultimately adds more strength. We're making our fish plate out of eighth inch steel. Installing this sturdy plate is fairly easy. A couple of tacks to hold it in place. Then all you do is burn it in. But we're not gonna stop here. A common way to reinforce the frame is to box it in. Boxing the frame increases its rigidity and adds yet another layer of reinforcement that will brace the seam. 
When doing work like this, my first step is to always make a template. A sharp utility knife allows me to make crisp edges that follow the profile of our frame. Then the template will be traced out on eighth inch plate steel. And we'll make short work of cutting it with our Lincoln Electric Tomahawk 1000 Plasma Cutter. We'll follow that up with a grinder and a sanding flap disc to smooth out the edges. While Jeremy cut out the boxing plates for the frame, I got to work prepping the sections of the chassis that will receive these reinforcements. With a quick test fit, perfect. And a couple of tacks, we can both get to work welding these in. Now we're not gonna weld these in solid in one shot. We're gonna end up moving around to help disperse the heat that we pile into the chassis. This will mitigate any weld distortion and keep our frame true and as close to stock strength as possible. We're minutes away from putting our Willys body on our CUCV chassis. Our M1010 has made quite the transformation from its ambulance body totaling 228 inches in length to its now bare chassis totaling 16 feet. You can follow us along as we hit the next milestone for this truck at PowerNationTV.com. But that's going to have to wait until tomorrow. <laughs>